let's see what else you have there, Andrew. Uh, I've got another question coming in on YouTube, wanting to get better at application packaging using PSADT. Is there anything that you do standard for most applications, such as checking for old software installs and things like that? Uh, um, PSADT I have not played around with too much. I know it's pretty widely used, or commonly used at least. Um, but I don't personally have a lot of experience with it. Well, uh, f first of all, for those who are, are, are new to this or haven't heard about it, the, the PowerShell App Deployment Kit or Application Deployment uh, has been around for a, a good decade, and we have customers that are using this as a standard for every single package they create just to have sort of a baseline. And, and I think that is pretty much uh, a, a good reasoning as, as any. Uh, back in the days when, before config manager was config manager, when it was SMS, that was very common to have like batch file wrappers like an install.cmd. So basically every application had that one, but then of course the content in that one was different. And then as technology matured, we switched over to VB script, uh, legacy now as well, and then also for the, the PowerShell. And that means that if you have uh, a lot of different applications, um, at least in a very most simple way, uh, it to me, it makes sense uh, to have a, some sort of standard way to do things in, in a company. I don't recommend repackaging application if whatever the vendor provide works. If the only thing I have to do, like this uh, click view example, where we needed to do a few things prior to launching the installer, then launching the installer, do a bit of logging, we did some profile modification when it was done. If that's all it takes to fix a, a good installation, I would not fire up like admin studio and spend 20 hours trying to repackage something. Uh, and organizations were outsourcing their entire packaging to like image or MSI factories almost. And I think that's uh, often uh, kind of a waste of, of time and resources. If the vendor has an installer that is okay, and you're just looking for a standardized way of doing it, wrappers like this and advanced wrappers like this i'm sorry for calling this a wrapper it's more like a solution than anything it's way more than just a wrapper but but the thing is it's a standardized way of working with apps highly highly recommend to to have a standard it's it's not bad at all it's easy to troubleshoot it's easy to work with than to having like 52 packages where the installers works in 52 different ways. Um, that's my take on it, at least. Um, I mean, you, you will find a lot of help out there uh, on this toolkit. It's, it's quite widely used. Uh, if you search for this in community and whatnot, that there is a lot of articles available and troubleshooting tips and whatnot. Definitely. And there was actually a, a, a follow-up to that, not just uh, PSADT specifically, but any scripting that goes with app packaging. Uh, uh, one that I might just ask if you could pull up, Johan, your um, script for uh, putting large applications into a WIM file, in addition to that wrapper, I think is a good... Uh, somewhat recent tip that people seem to be using more and more. Um, uh, yes, uh, I have it somewhere here. Yeah. Pretty easy to find. <laughs> yeah. Good name. No, but it's, it's just a, a PowerShell script that takes something you already have and just smacks it to a WIM file uh, using a native PowerShell command. And then, as your application installer, this would be a small version of the wrapper I showed you earlier, but this one just gives you the basic of actually mounting that WIM file, running the installer, and then dismounting the WIM file when, when you're done. Um, 
you will find a good few articles out there, organizations starting to use WIM files, especially for applications that are interesting, uh, that have a lot of small files, making it highly ineffective to download or HTTPS, stupidly ineffective to do anything or peer to peering with. Uh, my favorite example, I've probably shown it like 52 times by now, but I'm going to do it again because I can. Um, I was going to say some vendors that start with the letter A pop into mind uh, yes. immediately. <laughs> yeah, but, but think of this one, Fader Studio Max. It's not very big, but it's just massive and, and, and the number of files it has. They put that in a WIM file, it downloads in a minute and a half. Put it not in a WIM file, and you will see that it takes like 42 minutes to download. Just because this. Yeah. It makes a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. But shorthand version, wrappers, not a bad idea at all to use. A lot of organizations are using that for their config manager packages. Uh, Intune you don't really have a choice because you have to package anything in Intune as a very specific package format, but you can still use wrappers in Intune. Uh, I saw a post from uh, John just the other day. They were updating their Office installation script, so they were using wrappers in Intune to install Office instead of using the native package type that is in Intune for Office, which uh, leaves some room for improvement. Um, so yeah, good stuff.